This is the second part of our series on creating attributes. Let's start in the attribute section. Here we have tag, prompt, and default. The tag is essentially the data's title. And so whatever you're trying to look up in terms of attributes, if you're trying to find any list of attributes, then the tag is what you're going to be using for that. And it basically is like the self-explanatory explanation for the entire attribute. So for doors in our case, I'd like to call this door ID. And that basically makes a lot of sense. Here in the prompt area, this is very interesting. This is where you can essentially write a set of instructions to tell someone what data they're supposed to input. And this can be modified a lot by some of the modes that we'll talk about. I may as well talk about the constant mode, because if you turn constant on, prompt is then grayed out. That means that instead of having a prompt that asks you to input a certain set of numbers or letters or other data, instead you would actually just use the default section and your number in the default section, or letters of course, whatever is in the default section, will be displayed every single time you place this attribute. And it won't be prompting you to input some data. Hence the term prompt. So that's how constant works, so we'll turn that off. And for prompt, we're going to give ourselves some instructions because all of our doors will be different IDs. So we can say uh, ID equals what? And so we'll put a little question mark there. So it's basically asking us what the ID is supposed to be. So that works. Then in the default area, we can start with one of our default IDs, or one of our first numbers or letters for the door. So in this case, I want to accommodate for two digits instead of one, like the previous block. So I'm going to put DX, or I could even start with D1. And I think that makes a lot more sense. Here's, of course, the issue. I do want to have two digits, so 01 now makes even more sense. So we'll always start with D01, and then we'll be prompted to change our ID to something different. And this is the door ID tag for this attribute. Now you see how all of these really work together to give ourselves a full attribute. Then let's look at the mode section next. We have many different kinds of modes, and we've already spoken about the constant mode and how it basically turns prompt off because it's not really necessary and it just uses the default number every single time you place the attribute. So let's look at invisible next. Invisible is actually very interesting. It essentially allows you to make your values invisible on the screen. So your attribute will be there, it can be searched for, it's part of the block, but it's not visible and of course it's not printed. As a result, this is very useful for storing multiple attributes with different prompts that are available to you if you wanted to, for example, insert a block, and then specify certain data about this block in the background, and it would be part of the block. This is very useful, and we'll also look at a command, you can actually see it listed here when we mouse over it, the ATTDISP command will override this and allow us to basically make all attributes invisible or not, and so on. And so we'll look at those settings very soon when we get to the command section. Then we have verify, and verify is a very particular kind of setting here. You'll actually notice that when you initially try to use it with the default settings of AutoCAD, it's not going to really work. You can see that it tells us that it's going to prompt us to verify the attribute value is correct. This really means that after the first prompt, we're going to basically get a second prompt. But if the regular default AutoCAD settings for certain commands are turned on, then verify won't work. And we're going to be testing this very soon after we make our first attribute without verify. And then we'll switch to verify and we'll toggle those commands on or off and we'll see how verify is affected by it. Then we have preset. You can see the description states that it's going to set the attribute to its default value when you insert a block containing the preset value. So that's quite useful. Uh, we, or the preset attribute, excuse me. So the default value here is important when using preset. In our case, we want to be able to change that pretty often. However, it could be useful to have preset on in some instances. Then we have lock position. This one's very self-explanatory. The actual text for the attribute can be placed and it could be fixed, meaning that after it's placed, it is not going to accidentally be removed by someone or moved to a different position. This could be useful in some instances. I'm actually going to be turning this off for our first demonstration because I want to be able to move that text around and be flexible with it if I need to.
Now, setting it up perfectly in the block is the right way to go. But what if I wanted to adjust it because as I'm placing certain doors in the drawing, there may be some extra lines and other dimensions that eventually need to be created. And I need to just adjust that text a little bit and just move it maybe deeper inside the door or maybe outside the door. So lock position, I don't find to be too useful. It could have some uses if you really want things to be standard and fixed and not moved. But you know, basically, I like that freedom there. And I'm not going to accidentally move any of my text. Then we have multiple lines. This is great because you can basically have multiple different kinds of data. Uh, and you can see here that when this option is selected, you can specify a boundary width for the attribute. So you'll see that as I toggle multiple lines on, now our boundary width down here just turned on as well. This allows us to specify how the attribute flows its text and whether or not it's going to flow so far horizontally and eventually move on to the second line go horizontal and then move on to the third line. So multiple lines is actually quite useful. For this first instance, I'm not going to use it because we don't really need to use it just for this little amount of text. It's basically three characters right here. So we're going to turn that off, but we will test it and we'll see how it affects the attribute. Then we're going to be specifying on screen where the attribute goes. It's quite useful. If you know exactly where it needs to go, you can turn this off and use your X, Y, and I guess Z coordinates if you're trying to place attributes in space. Uh, mostly we're doing 2D work in AutoCAD, but you could do some 3D work here. So the Z axis is available. Then we're going to look at text settings. Let's look at our last bit of settings here under text settings. Justification is actually very interesting here, especially for certain labels that you want to be centered. What I've learned is that if you change it to middle center and then you use the midway between two points function, the text not only centers itself from its actual snaps, but it's also going to center itself perfectly in between the objects. And so middle center works very well in this specific instance. And then the text style is quite useful. Usually it's set to standard, which is typically not an annotative style. And you'll see that when I switch between standard and my annotative styles, it actually will toggle the annotative function here, which also means that I could turn the standard text style into annotative, basically manually by toggling the annotative setting on here. Now I'm just going to go back to annotative right here, and I'll just use my annotative text style. The text height is quite important. Usually it's not set to 1 8 of an inch, but I was doing some tests, of course, behind the scenes. And 1 8 of an inch is going to work very well for a scale of 1 quarter of an inch equals a foot. And you'll see that I've changed the scale within the block editor itself. Usually it's set to 1 to 1. This way I can see what my text is going to look like if it was going to be placed on a layout with a 1 quarter inch scale at 1 8 of an inch. Uh, text height. So that should be quite useful. Rotation is pretty self-explanatory, and like we mentioned earlier, the boundary width is controlled by uh, allowing multiple lines to be toggled on or off in the modes. And so we're not going to use multiple lines in this instance. We don't need to. There may be some attribute definitions that may have full sentences, maybe addresses, for example, or first and last names, lots and lots of data. And so that that uh, multiple lines option can be very useful and the boundary width just allows you to set how far or how long the text is going to be until it moves text from one line to the next line because it just doesn't have enough room for that text. So we'll turn that off. And then you can see that if you did have another attribute definition, it says a line below previous attribute definition. This is very sophisticated because it allows your attribute definitions to essentially place themselves automatically after you create them. So that's quite useful. And basically, the insertion point option here won't really be necessary in that instance. All right, I think that our settings are ready here. Let's place this thing. We're just going to click OK here. Now, let's see the little error that I made a bit. It made a small mistake. The tag cannot contain spaces. Now, this is important because tags are essentially searchable. And with different commands, there basically are no spaces. An underscore may work. Let's see if it does. I'll just put an underscore in between them. Beautiful. I love that. Now, initially, the tag is being shown here because we are basically in the block editor, and that's fine. So I'm actually just going to do the uh, shift. I'm going to hold shift and then right click midway between two points, my favorite command in AutoCAD. I've probably said that a few times in these tutorials. I'm going to click one point and then click the next one. And boom, our text is perfectly centered. Now, I did make our tag a bit too large to fit inside of this door. Of course, our text height is also making a difference, but I do know that 1 8 of an inch text height works very nicely with a quarter inch scale. So I'm actually going to edit this right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do ATT edit. And 
This is basically the fastest way to do so within the block editor itself. You can find this by going to different parts of your ribbon up here, but I'm just going to do ATT edit right here. It's going to ask me to select the block reference associated with it. So actually you'll see that this doesn't work because the attribute is right now a separate entity from the block itself and we're in the block editor. So right now editing this is a bit tricky. If I go back to attribute definition, it basically asks me to make a brand new one. And you can see here the align below previous attribute definition is now available. So I'll show you guys how we can edit an attribute right now. In order to edit an attribute independently from a block, we can essentially use a command that I really love the name of. This is the Batman command. It's very reminiscent of a special character that we all know and love. And this is actually the block attribute manager, hence the Batman acronym used for it. Now, we can see initially that under the block drop down here, we're looking at a block that just has one attribute. This is the other one that I initially demonstrated earlier. So the attribute that we were modifying is not here. However, if we go and we switch to this attribute right here, our attribute is right here and it's ready to be modified. And now that I'm looking at both attributes, I do want to update a few things. I want to make the tag a bit more distinct and consistent with the previous tabs. So it's going to be DXX for the other one. And the prompt door name equals, that does work. Uh, I actually may like the ID equals a bit more, but we'll see. So I'm actually going to select this tag right here and I'm going to edit it. Now, this is very similar to creating an attribute, except we're now in the edit attribute dialog. There's actually even more properties here for assigning layers to this attribute, colors, et cetera, et cetera, here in the property section. But you'll see that most of the other settings here are very similar. So we can actually see here that some of the text options are a bit different after editing, but they do match our scale, et cetera. So the height for six inches here is quite interesting how that works. Luckily, the text style is annotative, so that is not as significant. Now let's go back to attribute here. Let's fix this one a little bit. So DXX makes a lot more sense because initially in the block editor, we want our tag to be a similar amount of characters to the default number here so that we can not only find it, but we can also see how it's going to look before we place it onto our drawing. So that's very good. The ID equals, uh, I think works pretty well and it's very concise. So we're gonna leave it just like that. And now you can see that the modes here are also available to us. Constant is not because a prompt exists. What if I actually delete this? I'm actually just gonna copy it first, delete it here. Yeah, so constant cannot be chosen after you create an attribute. You'll want to define an attribute that is constant initially when doing so. But now that there's a prompt involved, can't really get rid of the prompt, so to speak. So it's very interesting how that works. And you'll see here how we can be, uh, we're able to toggle the invisible verify preset and multiple lines modes right here. And we will be doing that as we go through some of our tests right now. So I think we've edited the attribute enough. We're just gonna click okay. And now it displays itself a little bit differently in the block attribute manager. Mr. Batman is watching over us. Now we can click apply and see if it makes any changes on the fly. No, it does not change in the heat of the moment, but if we click okay here, now let's see something. It looks like this attribute here has not updated itself. And I'm just going to check and see. It looks like because it has a completely different tag, it looks like we may have a new attribute involved. Let's test this by going back to the attribute manager. And I only do see one attribute here in this block. So it looks like Basically, when you update an attribute, it doesn't necessarily update it here. Let's see if I can switch between a different tag here. If I type in a different tag here, DXX, is it going to switch? Well, it does switch on the drawing itself. I believe now it is using the same attribute definition as the other one. So it turns out that the tags here do need to be changed after modifying that. Very interesting. The values are the same. The ID is perfect. So this is looking very good right now, and we should be able to utilize this effectively. So let's get right into it and let's basically close our block editor. I'm going to save the changes we made here. Any previous blocks that were made with this are not going to update automatically. So you'll see that our block right here is essentially an older copy. If I do try to edit this oddly enough, it will remember the settings that I just made because the block itself is saved within AutoCAD. So I can actually insert it by going to the insert dialog right here. And I'm under the insert tab, of course. And you can see here our new value is here. I did forget to change some colors and settings for it, but that's okay. We'll change that a little bit later. You can see that as I place this block here, the prompt is coming up. What is the ID for this? Uh, let's make it 03, just to make it a little bit different from the other two. So we'll click okay. 
and there it is. We can then modify this if we need to. So I can right click on this, go into the block editor. I'm going to change the layer for this. I actually made a special uh, little layer for this. So a door name is right there. Let's see if it updates on the sheet itself. No, it does not. So this one I can basically get rid of. I can insert the block one more time. And now we're going to get it with that nice magenta font that's usually used for dimensions and labels. That's quite useful. And there it is. Our two foot 10 door has its own special set of attributes independent from our three foot door. Now we're going to look at how we can modify many modes and get different results for the attributes on the drawing itself. All right, before we continue so that we can avoid a little bit of confusion, I'm going to be moving some of these blocks to better positions. That way we'll truly understand exactly what doors we're dealing with. So basically we'll organize them so that the three foot doors are basically in one column and the two foot eight or the two foot 10 doors, excuse me, are in another column. Two foot eight is here at the end. We're probably not going to use it for this demonstration. All right. So let's now demonstrate what it's like to essentially change the attribute definitions for this and see what kinds of modes are going to be affecting that. So we can just edit the entire block itself. You can see that all of this is part of one block. So we'll right click and go to the block editor. Now let's edit these attributes. We can do that by going to Batman, one of my favorite commands now. And here we're going to modify a couple things about this. Now you can see here that if I go into this and click on edit, the actual edit attribute dialog does pop up. This is actually one way to get there. We can actually type in a command to get there immediately by going to ATT edit. And there it is. So we're going to select that. It's going to ask us to select the block reference. And once again, we did try this earlier and it's not going to work in the block editor itself. Let's actually close this and use ATT edit right here. So now we're going to select the entire block and there it is. And this basically only allows us to select the data in the prompt itself. So you would think, oh, that edit would allow you to change the actual attribute definition edit, but no, this is just for the prompts data in which the default is there by default. And this one, we can change this one specifically to anything we need to. Now, if we did have more than one attribute, then we could use these next and previous buttons and we can basically go to different ones. And so that could work. For now, we're just going to actually go back into the block editor. We actually don't need to be in the block editor to do this. So we can just type in Batman with two T's of course. And now we're back into the block attribute manager. We're gonna make sure that we're looking at the correct one under the correct block, select it, click on edit, and now we're back to modifying this. Let's now look at our modes. This is the end of the second part of our series on creating attributes. Part three is up next.